an issue as a, um, a, a just basically she was sexually abused and physically abused by her parents. They were they were they just didn't know the Lord. They didn't know the love of God, and, and they had difficulties in areas with drugs. And, and they raised her under an abusive mouth. They basically said she would come to nothing. And she was kicked out of her home. And then, um, you know, from that, she decided, I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to be like that. And this was in her own worldly ability. And she um, went into business and had and earned $37,000 and um, married this man who she thought was the idol man. He ended up running away with everything and leaving her with $2 and a car. And that was it. She was ready to give up her life. She was walking into the sea, having taken some drugs. She was walking, giving up on her life. And the Lord told her to come out of the sea. And just, he spoke to her. And she didn't know God. She didn't know him. But she listened to that voice. She listened to that still, quiet voice. And you know, sometimes if you're not sure of what the Lord says, Go to the Word of God, because that's what that lady did. She went and got the Bible, because because the voice told her to go and get the Bible, which is the voice being God. And um, she read the Bible, and she reads the Bible through. Come on, let's be. You know, we're called, aren't we, as a church, to be full of the Word, full of the Spirit, yes. full of the nations, yeah. full of love. Yeah. Can't be full of the Word if you don't read it. Come on, then. come on, pick up your Bibles, church. And it's not condemning, please. I know there are moments when you have got an intensity of things on your plate to do, but meditation of the word can be done at any moment. Walking right. around your house, walking around your job, or you can you can think on the truth. I, I read of another lady. This sorry, I just want to end that other story. That lady, she became a millionaire, a multi-millionaire in three years. Amen. You know, God took her from that because she just listened to what the voice told her, and she read the word of God. You know, and there's people here, you're called to be millionaires. You're called to do that. So just read the word, obey the word, listen to the word, and follow the word. Yes. Follow what he says. Be full of the word. And I read another story of a lady who was in a concentration camp this week. Um, not, not that she was in a concentration camp this week, sorry. But I read of her this week. And in North Korea. And all she knew was Psalm 23. All she knew was that the Lord is my shepherd. She wasn't allowed to talk to anybody. And she just kept on mulling over that. She constantly stuck to that scripture, stuck to it. And it looked like she would end up being incinerated. That's what they tended to do in North Korea with the Christians that were in this concentration camp. Eventually, they would die and just they would incinerate them, scatter the ashes on this road. But the Lord delivered her from that place in a miraculous way. And, you know, he, he wants to deliver you out of situations. It takes you time for you to realize and embrace what he says about you. Embrace that you are righteous. Embrace the truth. So, uh, we skip forward just a couple yep, of slides that's fine. Wrap this up. Yeah. We go through four, three slides, Adam. You see, righteousness gives you power, and that power gives you success. Someone who knows they're righteous is useful in every situation. Amen. Someone who doesn't know they're righteous, you can't even trust them to make a cup of tea in church, because they'll throw over someone. How dare you say that about me, and how dare you just rush and pressure me. When you know you're righteous, you can raise the dead. And you can make a cup of tea. Use it in every situation. A righteous person loses their job. Well, I said a, a sinful-minded person loses their job, and they start searching. Well, what did I do wrong? And why have I lost my job? And what have I done for you to punish me like this, God? And why? You know, a sinful person gets sick. Why am I sick, God? What have I done wrong? And they look to themselves. They don't look to the cross. They look to themselves. But a righteous person loses their job and they go, God, I know you love me. I know you love me as much as you love Jesus. I know you're in love with me. I know you adore me. So I don't know about the new job, but I know it's going to be better than the old job. And to be honest, I didn't even like their work in there anyway. <laughs> they're getting excited. 
righteous person gets sick and they go, this is awesome. This is just another, this is page one in my testimony. You need to know you're righteous. It's going to last you. Righteous, sinful-minded Christians go to church and they feel like it. Righteous Christians just go because it's this, I'm the righteousness of God over a I don't, not live, don't live by feelings anymore. Oh, man, next one. Last slide. Three steps to winning in any situation. And I've made them general, but in terms of righteousness, find out what God says. Get into your Bible and find out what God says. Step two, you know what God says. Stop asking anyone else their opinion. You know what God, why do you need someone else's opinion? You know what God says. God says, you are righteous. Don't go and ask everyone their dog, am I righteous? we got a hundred different answers. God says, he who knew no sin became sin, so you could be made the righteousness of God in him. And number three, do it no matter what. Believe it no matter what. Hold on to it. Fight for it. Stand on it. Train hard. Not because you like training, but because you like winning. And God has called you to be a champion, but the root of all that champion, for the next six months, we're just going to talk about how to let that champion life flow through you and how to change the world. Your, your, all the confessions we make every week. That's my sermon outline for the next six months. We're going to go through every statement in there, but it all starts with this. I am the righteousness of God. So let that, let that be the, the propelling force that drives you in life today every day. You're the righteousness of God, not through behavior, but through his grace and goodness, and you reign in life. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father, just stand your feet. Healing seems to have been a vein throughout this whole service, physical healing. Both me and Amanda were talking about it. The worship seemed to have that as an emphasis as well. If you're sick today, just come forward. God wants to heal you. We've got some elders and pastors, people who know their righteousness. They're just going to stand with you and help you believe for your healings. If you're sick today, just come forward right now. And we're just going to have a quick healing service. It's only going to be a few minutes, but it doesn't take long. When you know you're righteous, things don't take long. Get people healed quickly. Because why wouldn't God heal me quickly? Because he loves me as much as he loves Jesus. Awesome. Just come forward and just stand here. We're going to see some miracles today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.